everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're meeting David. Hi, David. Hello, Bob. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. And David, you have uh, you live in a, a really nice ambulance. I do. I live in this ambulance and I have been for almost two years. That's great. That's a long time. Yeah, anymore, that's a, a long time. Yeah. Uh, and you have your own YouTube channel, a channel about the ambulance. What's it? Uh, my channel is The Campulance Man. And my goal was to document how to take an ambulance and turn it into your home to help other people. Right, right. I, uh, I follow his channel because I just bought an ambulance and I'm going to be converting one and David's got some great ideas. So you can learn a lot from him. Well, and not just about ambulances, about everything. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you cover you. everything really well. Thank you, I appreciate that. Just to, I guess, back to the beginning, how did you end up living, deciding to live on the road? Uh, when I was 54, a couple years ago, I unexpectedly lost my job. And, you know, I was a homeowner, cars, all that stuff. And I said to myself, I just, I can't do this again. I can't go through getting another job, proving myself to strangers to pay for all my bills and all that. So I decided that I wanted to figure out a different way to lower my fixed costs every month and that's how I ended up doing this. I saw some of your videos, a lot of people's videos, did a lot of reading, started looking at different kinds of vehicles that I could possibly live in. I'm not the handiest cabinet maker kind of person, which steered me away from taking an empty, like a van and building it out because I knew I would really struggle with doing that. Well, and that's the fantastic thing about the ambulance is it's mostly ready to move in. Right. I, other I, than a bed. Yeah, exactly. I, I um, have added, like inside, just really minimal changes to the cabinets um, because that's not my that's not my skill set. You know, I'm I'm more mechanical, electrical kind of skills. But you've done a lot of surface things that make it look and feel really homey. Yeah, I wanted to give it at least some some homey, comfortable feel. I have toured some people's rigs where they've done no interior work. And, you know, ambulances are really sharp looking inside, but they're very industrial looking. So, yeah, I added just a little bit of homey feel. Me and my daughter, she helped me do all these things and it makes it a little more comfortable for me. It's always nice to have a woman's touch. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you know, us guys do a lot of things really well, and we do some things really poorly. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> no, she helped out a lot. It was great. Yeah. I just, go, having gone through the search for an ambulance, it's kind of difficult to find one. How were you able to find it? I found this on Craigslist. Oh, so uh, cool. Yeah, I used a website that lets you search Craigslist for the entire country. And so I spent, you know, days and weeks doing these searches and I lived in New York and I found this uh, down in Arkansas. It just happened to be where I found one that kind of ticked all the boxes for me. And so tell us a little bit about it. What year is it, uh, drivetrain? Yeah, it's, a, it's an O2. It's based on a Ford E450 and the box is a marquee. Uh, it has the, the 7.3 and, and the transmission. It's a 4R100, which I understand is a four speed transmission. Um, that's overdrive. The fourth speed is overdrive. Right. Yeah. How many miles did you have on it? They usually don't put a lot of miles. The chassis, when I got it, showed 235,000. Just quite a few. The previous owner, I bought it from a guy that had bought it from the firehouse. And he said that the engine had been replaced and that it now had 85,000 miles on it. I got to take him at his word. Right. The engine looked like it might have had 85,000 miles. It still had stickers on the valve covers and things like that. So right now I'm at about 110 on the engine and 255 on the chassis. Well, one of the great things about ambulances is they are made extremely, extremely well. It's kind of the exact opposite of an RV, which is made as poorly as it can be humanly made. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I, I just did a video about that, my whole thought process how I kind of ruled out RVs because I read up so many stories where RVs just fail, especially when you're living in them 365 yeah. days. They're not made they for that. Not. They're not made for that. Yeah. yeah. This is made as superbly as an RV is made poorly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yin yang. <laughs> yeah. Yin yang. Exactly. It's yin and yang. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't we just take a quick tour around and, and see what we, you, there is to see. I'd be glad to show you. I carry, uh, this is a 2000 watt WEN generator. I carry that for, you know, cloudy days. 
This does have the shore power plug, so you can plug this in and it, it runs through the inverter and charges the batteries. Right. This is uh, part of my tools and liquids for maintenance. That's one of the things I love about these ambulances, is all the outside storage. You, incredible. Can, you can kind of be lazy. You can. Like, yeah. this is lazy right yeah. here. Just in there. This is just <laughs> stuff. Spare tire, extra grill, tent stakes, uh, motorcycle locks, bungee cords. That's like a catch-all right there. Mm -hmm. So that's me being lazy. What's a little about your bike? Uh, Kawasaki 2018. KLX 250. When I went on the road, I had a I had a KTM motorcycle that was still on financing. I sold that about a year ago. Um, used the extra money from that to buy this. I carry this with me for trips into town to pick up groceries or pick up mail, things like that. I carry a big backpack on my back so that I can bring things back from town. And then some little adventure riding for fun too. But mainly, it's a tool for going in and out of town. Right. Well, that kind of raises the question: What kind of gas mileage are you? Fuel mileage are you getting out of your D, uh, 7.3? I average 13.5, which is amazing for this huge rig. Yeah, and that's that's an overall. That's multiple tankfuls, all kinds of different terrain, up and down mountains, and things like that. I get a high of 15 to a low of nine and a half, so it averages out to 13 and a half. And I use this, this is called an MX hauler. It's a, it's a type of bike carrier that mounts into the hitch. It has a hydraulic jack system. So you lower it down, you roll the bike over it, you, and then you jack it up with the hydraulic jack. So it's a really easy way to load a bike. So you're young yet. How are you supporting yourself on the road? If, you're, if it's okay if I ask. Yeah, I, um, I sold my house. I had savings. I got a severance package from my employer when I lost my job. And all of those things added together have allowed me to live a comfortable life out here. I still have a decent amount of savings and my little YouTube channel is actually starting to give me a little bit of money, which is paying for my groceries and gas every month. Well, that's good. Yes. Yeah. And it'll just grow. Uh, you got a good channel and, uh, and it'll just grow. Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> and it will, it really will. You could out of put it, if you consistently put out a good product, people are gonna watch. Yeah, and that's what I try to do. Yeah, and you do. Yeah. So, well, while we're talking about it, tell us again your YouTube channel. The Campulance Man. So it's, uh, I watch it myself. It's a great channel, folks. So go watch it yourselves. Thank you. Uh, I put a backup camera on. If you're gonna drive an ambulance, you have to have a backup camera. Uh, around here, I installed, uh, this is a 5,000 BTU air conditioner that I installed for keeping the inside cool. That's where your, uh, your uh, generator comes in. You need the generator to run it? Um, no, I can run it off of the solar uh, up until the sun starts going down. Oh, wow. And if I want to keep running it, then yeah, I can start up the generator and run it. Wow. Yeah. So when I run the air conditioner, obviously I keep this cabinet door open. Right, you yep. need a good draw. Yeah. But that's really nice. So you have a lot of solar. Yeah, I put 690 watt panels on top, so that's 1140 watts. And the, the air conditioner pulls about 400 watts when it's running. So the batteries will stay at 100% while the air conditioner is running. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is my Ames Power 3000 watt inverter. Did that come with it? No, oh. I installed that. The inverter was missing, which right. happens in a lot of ambulances. Right. The inverters go missing. So that's. Um, it's an inverter charger, so when you plug in shore power, it charges the batteries. I have three 100 amp hour, those are Renogy gel batteries. And I have an EP Ever, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I have an EP Ever, that's a 100 amp charge controller. Oh. And then in this cabinet, I installed a water system. This is a hot water heater that runs off of the propane. I have two 16 gallon water tanks. Oh my. One of them is connected to the hot water heater for showers. And the other water tank is connected to a faucet inside the truck. So up here, from here forward, it's an E450 van. There's really no difference inside. So the one, the one drawback that I found after living in this ambulance for a while is that I bought one that I can't stand all the way up in. Right, you're a little, I can, but you're a little taller. Yeah. When I was searching for an ambulance, my 
I, I was under the mistaken assumption that there weren't a lot of them that had high ceilings. I have since found out that there are. So I, I wish I had bought one that had a higher ceiling. So I, after adding the freezer, the refrigerator, the microwave, I added this uh, stove oven combo so that I can cook things in an oven as well as on a stove top. I bought an air fryer. So a lot of focus was put into feeding myself better. So it might seem weird that I have a fridge and a freezer, but it was important for me to start feeding myself better, which I have been. I actually got fat over the winter. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my bed, uh, I, this is the, the included bench seat that was already here. What I did was just simply added a piece of plywood under here on a piece of piano hinge. So that piece of plywood just folds out and this mattress i ordered it from a place online uh, custom made with a hinge in it so that when that piece of plywood folds out that mattress lays down and it comes out to be a twin extra long bed and i use a couple of wooden dowels two inch right. diameter dowels that go under the piece of plywood that hold it up and that's worked out well for me this is i have a diesel heater a diesel air heater mm -hmm. for heat which is actually mounted under the bed in this cabinet and so that's the outlet for it that you're seeing right there. The controller is mounted right up there uh, underneath the fan controller. So this this is just, a, you know, you hit the go button right there and five minutes later you got hot air pumping out. Right. And it's tapped into my main fuel tank. You've got an apartment on wheels. Well, I my goal was to kind of try to emulate what it was like in my house. Right. I wanted it to be that comfortable. And what I used to do back there, uh, a ceiling fan, a max air fan up there, Right. Um, this is for late night viewing, a little tablet I put there. I ran a, a power plug over there so that can stay um, charged up. And I use that instead of turning on my inverter and my big TV. TV, video, movies is a big part of my life. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of focused on that. Um, you know, there's behind you is a big TV that we can look at when we spin around. So that was something that was important to have for me. So this allows me to keep watching stuff without having to turn the inverter on. Okay, one thing I always ask yeah. is, how do you go to the bathroom? Uh, bucket. Just I have an outside shower tent, bucket method. Right. Yep. And that's how your shower is outside in the uh, tent? Yeah, I always mm -hmm. set up my shower tent on this side. That hose for my water heater is about 12 feet long, so I put the shower tent out there and drop that uh, the shower head into the top of the tent. A big cabinet full of food. I've got a library of books up there. This is my towels and bedding up in this cabinet. Uh, this is my air fryer, coffee maker, pots and pans. And this is uh, dishes, utensils, a um, little bit of Gatorade, stuff like that. This is my refrigerator. This is my freezer. This is built on a rail system, so it slides out. Um, this here was a... Oh, what a nice addition. idea. I don't know how I ever lived without that. Yeah. Because I was eating, like, on my couch. Sure. This has become my, my laptop area. This is where I do all my my cooking and my eating. So I don't know how I lived without that. These are these are the controllers. This, this actually was part of the original center console. I wanted to save these switches for the outside floodlights, so I cut just this section. It was a big piece originally, so I cut this down, rewired it back to this area to save it. These are just the controllers for the solar system, the inverter. This is the charge controller. That's my Victron battery monitor. Uh, television up there, like I said, uh, watching TV is kind of something I do a lot. So I wanted to put, this is a 32 inch TV and it's on, it's on an arm. So it can come out here all the way out of the way. Because mm -hmm. there actually is a cabinet behind it that I have like a little TV box and things like that in it. So. This is the, the original ambulance power cabinet. So all of the 12 volt wiring is all contained in here with relays and uh, circuit boards and all that kind of stuff. So this is, a, this is a, the whole power cabinet for the ambulance. And this is the faucet that I talked about. It has this switch right here. Lefty could use some water. Oh, that's a good airflow. That's a good flow. Yeah, that's a little good, much wow. on the start, too. Yeah. Sometimes it <laughs> splashes me in the face. Yeah. But uh, I think you can turn the pump down. I'm going to see if I can turn the pump down a little bit. 
All right, one uh, one problem that in, that you have discussed quite a bit on your channel is insurance. Did you have any problem getting insurance? I didn't. Uh, at the time, I already had a Geico policy for my car and my home also. And I tried to insure it on their website, and it said I needed to call. So I, I gave them a call and gave them the VIN number, and the young lady was able to add me to my policy. It was a little bit strange. I got a form in the mail from them a couple weeks later that I had to certify that it was not being used for business purposes and that it didn't have any signage on it. Different places have different rules. So everyone, I, I recommend everyone uh, take the VIN before you purchase, talk to an agent, make sure you can get it all squared away yeah, at a reasonable price. I just did an update video about that. That's exactly what I recommend to people because that's the only way you can guarantee right. if, if you know beforehand. No surprises. No surprises, <laughs> yeah. Right. I've heard some stories. People have had some trouble. Yeah. yeah. It all depends on the state. Some states make it easy, some states make it hard. Yeah, that's what I'm finding. Yeah. Well, David, you've just done a fantastic job. It's Thank just, you. Uh, it's a wonderful home Thank you've you. on wheels that you've created. It took a lot to get here. It took the first year of tweaking things and changing things and adding things, but I'm now comfortable in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can sure see that. It, it's it's a, a wonderful home. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It feels good. And so uh, tell us your uh, YouTube channel again. It's the Campulance Man. Right. So everyone should go. And, you, man, great information. You, you make great videos. So oh, I, I appreciate I'm, I'm it. giving it a shot. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Everyone go subscribe. So thanks, David. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. It was great to meet you, Bob. And, folks, if you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe here, too. Uh, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now. Bye-bye.